When you talk about demand, what comes to mind first is markets. A market is the platform that brings together buyers of different sorts and sellers of different sorts. They are the demanders and the suppliers in any situation that involves a potential exchange of goods and cash. The corner gas station, an e-commerce site, the local music store, a farmer's roadside stand. These are all markets familiar to us all. Now, let's go on to examine what demand is. Demand is a schedule or a curve that shows the quantities of a product that are purchased at various possible prices, other things equal. It shows you the pattern that a consumer follows when he is willing and able to purchase various amounts of a product at each of a series of possible prices during a specified period of time. Let's consider this hypothetical demand schedule for a single consumer purchasing bushels of corn. This table shows how the various prices of corn and the quantity of corn a particular consumer would be willing and able to purchase at each of these prices are related. At $5 per bushel, the consumer is willing and able to buy 10 bushels per week, but at $4, the consumer is willing and able to buy as many as 20 bushels per week, and so forth. Thus, demand is simply a statement of a buyer's intentions with respect to the purchase of a product. Let's represent the relationship between the price of corn and an individual's demand for this corn on a simple graph. Let's measure quantity demanded on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. Let's plot and connect the five price quantity data points listed in the table with a smooth curve labeled D. This curve is what we call a demand curve. Its downward slope reflects an inverse relationship that economists call the law of demand. So, what we understand is that other things equal, consumers will buy more of a product as its price declines and less of it as its price rises. Having come to this conclusion, we must now ask ourselves another question. Why is there an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded? Actually, the law of demand is consistent with common sense. People do tend to buy more of something when it's priced low rather than when it's priced high. That's why there is always a rush at clearance sales. It's ample evidence of the law of demand. Buying depends on one more thing, and that's utility. It's been noted that in any specific time period, a buyer derives less satisfaction from each successive unit of the product that he consumes. This satisfaction can be termed marginal utility. Because successive units yield less and less marginal utility, he will buy additional units if only the price of those units is progressively reduced. We see, therefore, that consumption is subject to diminishing marginal utility. For example, a decline in the price of chicken will increase the purchasing power of consumer incomes, enabling people to buy more chicken. This is the income effect that price decline has on demand. At a lower price, chicken is relatively more attractive and consumers tend to substitute it for pork, lamb, beef, and fish. This is the substitution effect that price decline has on demand. Income and substitution effects combine to make consumers able and willing to buy more of a product at a low price than at a high price. It thus becomes clear how price and quantity demanded are inversely related.